create our MySQL database for Altium, I'm going to start out by going over to uh, www.mysql.com. And uh, from there, we're going to look for the downloads. And what we're looking for is the free community edition. And once we get to the, the community edition, I suggest that you look at the MySQL on Windows installer and tools. It uh, provides a, a suite of uh, tools, everything you would need. Okay, uh, this page will tell you what's all involved um, in the MySQL on Windows, all the components. What you need to do is to select the installer. And once you've selected the installer, you can scroll down. Um, and, and you may note that it's only available in 32-bit um, versions, the installer. So you can run that. that. Um, I recommend you do the full installation here, this large file, the 230 megs. Okay. Anyway, after you get that installed, um, I'll see you on the other side. I'm not going to put you through watching me install my SQL. Um, so we're going to jump ahead and uh, show how to work with the installed version of MySQL. After you have MySQL installed, you should be able to go over to your uh, search box in Windows 10 and type in MySQL and look for the MySQL workbench. Click on that, get it started. I've already set mine up, um, but when you first install MySQL, It'll come up uh, and it'll show a, uh, a, a demonstration project. Um, I've already deleted that demonstration project and have put in my own project. I'll just look a little bit what was involved in that. So, again, when you first open it up, the MySQL, there'll be a demo project. There'll be some tables in there. I deleted all those tables. I, uh, I renamed uh, the database. Let's go look around for a minute how you might rename that. I think you can do that from the top. So right here you would, I think you can select this little wrench and uh, you can give it a connection name. So here you can see this connection name is local parts. You're going to need your username and you're going to, uh, you can always test those connections up, up front here. See that we got a successful connection. Hey, one of the first things after you get MySQL up and running is you're going to have to, uh, someone's going to have to be the administrator. You're going to need to learn how to go in and uh, manage connections. Um, that's going to allow you to, uh, to create connections. And you're going to also need to uh, manage the uh, users. So, for example, after you, you have a database, you can go under server users and privileges and that's where you're going to set up a user like here I've set up a user named Randy uh, one important point is that you want to give these users um, this percent sign which is basically unlimited privileges um, I also assign schema privileges the same with the percent so you may look like you're blocked out but basically this means they have all privileges um, I gave this user administrative role that was myself. Anyway, you need to you need to learn to be an administrator and to create user accounts. After you have that done, um, you're ready to start uh, building your database. So what I did here is um, I'll just delete these and I'll delete at least one of them and just start over from there. Um, but these databases were created, so I'm going to do what's called a drop schema, and that's going to drop that parts uh, table. So next thing we need to do is to go over to um, pcbparts.blogspot.com. From there, we're going to get an example uh, access database. And, but more importantly, we're going to uh, download um, some scripts. So in this particular case, I'm working with Altium 18. And I prefer to use a 64 bit version of Altium uh, for this demo. So I'm going to, uh, it really doesn't matter for these scripts um, but, uh, because I'm, I'm going to do this all in, in 64 bit. 
I would I'm going to select this and go down and download the 64-bit version okay after we get that downloaded um, you can look at the extracted into a folder here I've extracted the zip file into a folder uh, parts x64 and what we're looking for is a folder called scripts and this is where you'll find the MySQL scripts you'll need to unzip those here I've unzipped them already and these are the scripts to create the tables in MySQL so let's go back to the workbench and what we do is just simply do a run script and then we need to navigate over to um, those MySQL scripts. So you can see here we're back on the parts x64 directory in the scripts folder. And we're going to select the script to create the parts table. We're going to call this one parts. This is uh, important. The naming convention is important if you'd like to have some compatibility with the parts front end. And I, I recommend you do, at least for the demo. You can change it to other names later if you like, but for compatibility with uh, with this demo you need to use these naming conventions and this is going to be UTF-8 for our character set we'll run that tells us it was completed successfully and if you don't see the parts table here you may need to hit this little refresh icon and then you'll see the parts table now notice this is just an empty table so all we've done is create the table um, it tells us, you know, what the field names are, the parameters, if you will, and Altium. So we've now got our database, and uh, you would do the same thing for the manufacturer links and the part links if you would like to use uh, manufacturer links and, and supplier links. Those aren't uh, required, um, but they're a nice feature that's uh, used by the parts front end. We'll go into that more detail at another time. Okay, now that we've um, got the... Uh, MySQL installed. We've created three tables and uh, set up a user account in uh, MySQL. Uh, one of the first things I like to do is just go ahead and use the parts front end again and connect to um, the MySQL database. So here you can see we've got an ODBC driver string. Um, also there's some help online um, that you can find on the blog. Just scroll down to um, MySQL and in there you can see some examples about uh, installing the scripts, some documentation, so where we uh, ran the scripts to add the tables, hit the refresh, um, and then uh, we started setting up our connection strings. So anyway, here's an example of a connection string for the parts front end. And this is a, an example of a connection string for the Altium DBLib. So we'll take a closer look at so that's that's my connection string here um, I'm using a MySQL ODBC version 8.0 ANSI driver and uh, the server was localhost you might remember that when you're looking back here if we're at the top you can see I'm going to get us back to the top home page here but you can see this is the local parts and you can see it's on local host and uh, at port dot uh, 30006 okay anyway that's important information and then you're going to need your user's name and the user's password anyway the syntax is on the blog if you have trouble with that and then we'll just select connect and notice we've now connected to the database and no surprise the database is empty so uh, we're going to add some records to that. But before we do that, we're going to check the connection string in Altium also. So I've already created a MySQL dblib string. And you can see this is what it looks like again. It looks similar to the, the connection that we made for the parts front end. We're using the MySQL ODBC 8.0 ANSI driver again, localhost, um, where database is parts, and we have a user um, name Randy and a password name Randy for this example. And you can uh, use the table uh, browser in the dblib below to look at the records. You can see there's no records in the database yet. We still need to add some records. Um, and, but we also need to um, map what's known as the ID field or the primary key in the database. So if we were to go back and look at the, the database again, the parts database I'm going to do is 
open that up a little bit so we can see a little bit more about that. So anyway, you can see here that that's our primary key. That's what this PK stands for. It's a long integer uh, in this particular case, um, and all the rest of the field uh, field types are uh, short text, 255 character fields. Um, using a long integer will give us a, a better performance than any other uh, uh, ID will. So it's my preferred. Uh, you could use an, a text string if you like, but you'll get a slightly better performance if you make your primary key a long integer. Anyway, that's that ID key again. And in Altium, that's where we need to uh, link and say that the database ID equals the parameter ID. So it'll, it'll usually select them automatically for you, but anyway, that's what we want. And we can save that if we like. Okay, let's try to get some data in this uh, database. Again, what I'm going to use is I'm going to go back and use the parts front end again. And I'm going to start out with a, a simple uh, database that was shipped uh, in the with the parts demo. So when you downloaded the parts, you also got a access database, and it's right here. Let's just take a quick look at that. That access database. We're going to open it in access. If you don't have access, that's okay. You don't need it. I'm just show you what it looks like. So a database is just nothing more than uh, something that looks similar to an Excel spreadsheet. It's got uh, rows of data, which are n referred to as records, and it's got fields, um, which in Altium we refer to as parameters. And this is a, a small sample of data. But what we're going to do is uh, we're going to connect to that database. And when we can do that by going over to the data source that you just download it, go to the parts back in folder and look for the parts back in database. And connect to that. And we can see that now the parts front end is connected to a small database with 22 records in it. Okay. Um, if you had a larger database and if you needed to, you could use the parts front end to export that data. Um, so here again, I'm just going to show an example. This has already been exported before, but there it is there. Um, we'll just replace it, but anyway, there it is exported. But the point is, is this database could have had two, 3,000 records, whatever. We could have quickly, easily exported it. And now what we're going to do is connect to our uh, MySQL database. And earlier I saved a uh, configuration for that database. I'm just going to pull it up again, and you can see there it is with the connection string driver. Um, so one thing nice about the parts front end, it allows us to save uh, connections to various databases. So we'll connect onto that. And again, no surprise, we don't have any records in there. But now using the parts front end, what we're going to do is import some records. So we'll go right back to that parts um, folder that we had earlier where we had exported uh, the records. It's in this backup folder, and there it is, parts. Um, We'll select that. And the only thing we need to do now is map the, the fields over. Um, parts has an option if the field names weren't exact matches that you could match fields. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and just select them all. And then we're going to import them. So it's just letting us know here that all the records are going to be updated where the IDs match and the records are going to be appended where they're not matched. Okay, right now it's bringing these uh, records into the uh, MySQL database. So when we close that, we're looking at those 22 records right there. Okay, so next what we can do is let's take a look in Altium. Remember that we already had the dblib file set up in Altium. And um, we may need to refresh that connection. Or at least... Uh, Just do a refresh on this connection and see if that will help. Let's reconnect. There you go. There's our 22 records. So 
sometimes if you've just put some data in there, you may need to uh, to reconnect. And to reconnect, sometimes you may also need to unselect the connection string and just come back to it and then hit reconnect. Okay, so there's our 22 records. Okay, so it's really that simple. And then once you have your database uh, up and running, you can uh, go to uh, the lower uh, right-hand corner in, in Altium, select the Libraries panel. And from the Libraries panel, you can select to install from file. And from there, I'm going to go over to the uh, parts DB lib file. Um, I think in this case, I put it on the X drive. Probably for convenience, I should move that to the, the demo drive and include it in the download for users. Okay, so we'll take a look, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to find it there. Okay, so normally we would select our dblib type libraries and we would we would select it here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this for a minute. I'm going to take a moment to go ahead and make this a little easier for users who want to uh, try to use this. I want to do a save as. I'm going to save that to the parts backend folder. And we'll call it a, a MySQL dblib. Uh, call it parts MySQL dblib. All right. We can close that now if we like. We're take one look around in it. Just no surprises there. But we'll save it, close it. All right, back to installing it. So we're going to go under libraries, install from file. And I'm going to go back to the parts x64 parts back in folder. We'll select our filter for dblib type libraries and load the parts MySQL. Okay, looks like it's coming up. All right, so there it is. We have our 22 components. And uh, I think that'll be faster um, next time we connect to it. I noticed that uh, that took a little bit longer than, say, a, a an access database would, it looks like. But anyway, now you can place parts from that library, if you like. That's uh, pretty much it. So anyway, if that's something you're interested in, um, I suggest you get over to mysql.com, download the free community version, get it installed. Um, then go over to parts, pcbblog.spot, download the uh, free uh, back uh, parts um, demo version, and run the scripts in mysql to create the, uh, the databases. And then use uh, connection strings similar to those that I did in this demo to connect to the database, and uh, you should be good to go. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope that helps anyone who's out there trying to create a MySQL database. Thank you.